Today, Guy Martin will compete in the world's fastest road race. Only in America, eh? Only in America. I think there's a catch on in Grimsby. Guy is competing in his own transit van. A van has never entered in this race before, and just five months ago, his was a crumpled write-off. If you would have said to me then, right, look, here's your van that you love, that's your pride and joy, but you'll write it off and it'll get turned into this, I'd have probably said, yeah, I'll have that, I'll have that, that's all right, that, yeah. Alongside Guy will be his navigator, John Putnam. He has 13 Nevada races under his belt and has won it eight times. Their competition is formidable. Some of these cars are amazing. And then there's this transit sticking out like a sore thumb. There was a Lamborghini Diablo in front of it, and it's like a third of its height. Racing begins bang on 8 a.m. As Guy's start time approaches, the team are tense. I'm a fairly calm person, but I was chewing fingers and stuff. <laughs> could have got up to the first mile and just broken. <laughs> the biggest concern is whether Guy will be able to select sixth gear, the gear he'll rely on most throughout the race. The team hope they fix that issue, but their fix might now cause problems selecting other gears. 50 seconds. What am I thinking? I'm thinking, um, don't set off the line like a madman. 30 seconds. If you could spin the tires, fry the clutch, break the prop shaft, you could do something stupid off the line when there's really there's no need to. So we've got a left bend over the crest and do a three mile straight. Mm -hmm. It's a 90 mile race, don't go mad off the line. Pulled off in first, it sounded pretty good, and then he went for second and missed second. And he went for second again and missed it again. I was just like, oh, just put it in third, just put it in third. Guy finally gets second and carefully moves up through the other gears. And it was still going as it went out of sight, so I was fairly happy then. I got into top gear and then started excelling. It's now crunch time. I was a bit nervous, I was a bit nervous. But I just thought, is he gonna do this please? They've entered the 150 miles per hour class without the van having ever achieved that speed. Incredibly, in just 60 seconds from a standing start, Guy's three-year-old transit van, it's 150, and it's still accelerating. 158 miles an hour, 164 miles an hour. And then the next thing, I know, I'm, John's having to slow me down because we're nearly 170 miles an hour. Tap it down. How's it feel? Don't. Okay, now we're at 160 right now, so that's great. You're happy. Yeah, I'm happy, yeah. They're now covering the length of three tennis courts every second. Once we got through that first couple of corners, we realized, oh, this is, this is going to do it. Do a good job. 160 mile an hour in a transit van, no problem. Genuinely, no problem. No problem at all. Now, for Guy, it's all about keeping it on the road. For John and his rally clock, it's about keeping them on pace to hit the perfect average speed. Coming to a right hand sweeper. All the temperatures are good. Okay. Got a seven mile straight after this. We're pretty good at 160. Yeah, I'm only just touching the throttle, so it's not working it hard. There's nothing to register your speed off, because it's just vast open spaces. Man, miles and miles of nothingness. How's it feeling through the curves? 
a little wobbly. No, a fair yeah. bit wobbly. What do you think? Yeah, it's, you a little, can, it's a little wobbly. You can feel it. You can feel the same as me. OK, that's good then. <laughs> When he go around the fast corners, it does feel like a ship at sea. And uh, John was a John was a bit uneasy as I was. It's kind of different being up this high when you're. <laughs> <in the corner. laughs> yeah. Fifty-six miles into the event. Okay. Temperatures and pressures all good. And our tire pressures are looking good. The van was pretty perfect. The van never missed a beat. The tire pressures went up and stayed there. All the temperatures went up and stayed there. Perfect. Sixty-five miles into the 90-mile race, they're approaching the most technical and dangerous part of the course. Got less than ten minutes to go. Coming into uh, the narrows soon, are we? Yeah, yeah, we are. Guy will have to slow right down for the narrows. So they've built up a time buffer to keep on schedule for a 150 average. 37 in the back. Shall I ease off now? Um, so yeah, we probably should, yeah. With so little testing, they've no idea at what speed the van can handle the tighter section. So I don't think it's as low as 70 through the narrows, but it's not going to be much more, is it? No, no, I, You can yeah. feel that. John's computer shows their time buffer at 36 seconds. If Guy drives through the narrows at 75 miles per hour, John's calculations say they should come out the other end on time. Left turn into a right, right into a short straight. Short straight to a right turn. Right turn into, right turn into a left. Long one, left turn into a left, left into a second left, exiting the canyon. And we're out of here. Perfect. They emerge safely from the narrows, and the computer says they're almost bang on schedule. And we're good. We're man, we lost a second. We're a second down. So we've got six miles. In a van that nearly didn't make it to the start line, on a course Guy has never driven at speed before, they're now approaching the finish line on schedule and in contention. Is that the finish down there? Yep, we're almost there. But John spots a problem. We've got some time up here, I think. Have we? Yeah. While Guy's readout shows him just a second off a perfect time, John realizes that the van's tires have expanded much more than he'd made allowance for. So his calibration for the last 90 miles has been wrong. He quickly recalculates and reprograms his computer. They're massively off target. We might have a lot of time up, actually. What shall I do? Slow it down. Break. Uh, yeah, we can't go much slower. That's our, we're lowering our tech speed now, so. They cross the line eight seconds ahead of a perfect time. But Guy's reaction is relief. <laughs> well, we survived. We did. <laughs> we survived, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, it did make it. It's good. I'm it impressed did. he's making it. We hit the line at zero, but there was a slight calibration issue. Uh, well, what do you reckon happened with the time there, then? But I was having to adjust up with the, uh, the clock after we did the tire pressure change, so... Right, uh, is that what it is? There was a long jump between adjustments. You know, because the tires expand, and it, you can't account for that. John hadn't had experience with that, um, his equipment in that van to get the time perfect. Thank you very much, Mike. Hey, thank you, it was a blast. <laughs> Let's give him a big hand! Back at the start, they're just relieved to hear that the van's finished safely. Guy Martin, John Putnam has crossed the finish line without incident. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we found out he'd actually gone too fast. 
which is a great way of losing, <laughs> really. The winner in guys class was Robert Wood. In his Ultima GTR, he got within one hundredth of a second of the perfect time. Guy came 14th. That's as good as we could do. And we still averaged 150 mile an hour. We just averaged 150.7 mile an hour. We have done the job, the van's done the job. Well, where else in the world can you do that? Where can you do where else can you do that? Yeah, well done, mate. You know, I have to say what a fantastic job Dan, Stuart and the team have done in, in converting that. I think that's it now. Pack in the bike. I'm going bike. I'm going I'm going van racing. We went there to run in the most competitive high-speed class against supercars. And we did with a transit van, and it was Guy's transit van. Still got me thinking about it. You've got a bag in the back. Yeah. Hey, got the van. Spent the last six months of my life just going to work and building a race car. How cool is that? Thank you. Right, that Thank you. Thank you. It's been an experience. Anytime. <laughs> a mad Englishman coming over in a work van. Yeah. <laughs> it is fast. It's not just fast for a van, it is fast. It's just incredible. It's been an experience. Yeah, it was a fun ride. What's not to love? Bet there's not another one of those in Lincolnshire. Would you? You wouldn't reckon, would you? It's fast. Yeah, you pissed it, didn't it, really? <laughs>